Washington's Clear Thinking Headquarters. The Morning Majority, 5 to 9 on 630 WMAL. 837, Morning Majority, Brian Neiman, Joe DeGeneva in this morning. By the way, I got some emails from people saying, I thought you said Larry King was going to throw out the first pitch at the Nationals game yesterday. Apparently, Larry's going to throw out the first pitch at tomorrow's game. Oh, there you go. So we'll get our chance to see how good Larry King is at throwing the baseball. Uh, they had a bunch of military guys do it yesterday. And quite frankly, they didn't do a good job. <laughs> there were like five of them out at the same time. There's some national players ducking for cover. They thought they were throwing grenades. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Shannon Breen joins us now from the Fox News Channel. You can uh, see her Sundays anchoring 12 to 2, Fox is America's news headquarters. Good morning, Shannon. How are you? Good morning, gentlemen. Uh, well, I know you've been covering the, uh, the back and forth on the uh, CR negotiations and whether or not they've reached a deal. There was a report that, hey, they kind of came to an agreement on a $33 billion cut, but now we're hearing, hey, that that there is no deal in place. What's the latest in your reporting, at least on that? Well, you know, of course, it was really interesting because yesterday morning when he got up, and you guys are always on it first and earliest, you know, we hear Democratic leaders saying, yeah, we've reached a deal. We've reached a number, but we haven't gotten to the details. And, of course, the cliche, the devil is always in the mm-hmm. details. Uh, you know, House Speaker John Boehner was very quick to have a press conference yesterday morning saying, uh, no, we have not reached a deal. Uh, by the end of the day, then Democratic Senator Chuck Schumer took to the Senate floor and kind of uh, tiptoed about it, saying it's okay if Speaker Boehner pretends publicly we don't have a deal, but basically we do. Uh, so Republicans continue to say no. Democrats continue to say yes. Uh, you know, the numbers are off, but we'll see if well, they're really making any progress. Well, is it, I mean, obviously the Democrats are trying to paint it as the, the extreme portion of the Republican Party, the Tea Party part of the Republicans are trying to force Boehner into saying no to this. Does he have to sell his caucus on this deal, or is there really no deal as far as Boehner is concerned? Well, it's interesting because, you you know, we always try to parse their words and exactly yeah. what they're saying. And what he said yesterday is he kept repeating, we are one half of one third of the federal government, and we cannot impose our will on the Senate. And there were some who thought that was giving him a little bit of wiggle room, saying, hey, we've done everything we can. We passed H.R. 1, which calls for $61 billion in cuts for the rest of the fiscal year. But at the end of the day, we can't force the Senate to do what we don't want them to do. Yeah, well, uh, Shannon, hi, Joe DeGeneva. Um, what, what's really fascinating to me is that that's the problem I think the Republicans have had is they've lost the narrative. They've allowed, no, no matter how many films we see of Chuck Schumer, you know, telling everybody how to be bad in public, the fact is the Democrats have controlled the narrative and the Republicans seem to be back on the heels when they have passed a bill and the Senate hasn't. Yeah, and, and, and it's the big one. Uh, $61 billion we're talking about. And, of course, the Tea Party was in town yesterday uh, in the rain and the drizzle of a cold Washington day, um, pushing and, and reminding these Republicans that they say, hey, we helped to elect you. Don't forget the promises that you made. Uh, while you have several of the Democrats saying they're holding you hostage, they are extremists. I did think it was interesting that it seems top Republicans are trying to regain that narrative a bit. Uh, mm-hmm. We saw Senate Minority Leader Mitch McConnell go out and say, we're thrilled the Tea Party is involved in this negotiation because they've changed the entire debate. Right. And if you want to call us extremists, that's only going to trigger more people who are average Americans like the Tea Party. Boehner said the same thing in his press conference yesterday. Uh, they're average mm-hmm. Americans. We want to walk uh, among true, real Americans. And if that's how they want to debate it, we welcome them, and we're so glad they're here. Yeah, see, I think that's the key. you got to be on offense on this. You can't be standing back waiting to be hit, punched in the face. Yeah, but to your point, Shannon, I think it's a good one, is that, you know, Boehner gets a bad rap on all of this. Essentially, you know, everyone's throwing it on his lap, but right. the action is in the Senate. Right. I mean, that's where the compromise has to be. I mean, the House, can they passed it. I mean, you know, he's got the votes because he's got the Republicans. All the action's really in the Senate, and that's who he has to work with, and it's, uh, I think I think he's getting a little bit uh, unfair criticism on all uh, He is, absolutely. That's why McConnell, who's very good with messaging, needs to be out there more. Yeah. Hey, I heard that you have information on, on Obamacare in, in the 11th Circuit. What's, what's that about? What's the latest on that? Yeah, you know, we had a big development yesterday uh, during the day. You remember that Roger Vinson, the judge, the federal judge in yeah. Florida, ruled that the core of, of health care, that individual mandate, is unconstitutional. And a few weeks back, he ordered the parties to expedite that case, either to the Supreme Court or to the 11th Circuit, just one step below. And we got uh, the date yesterday from the 11th Circuit announced the case will be heard on June 8th. 
uh, from a three-judge panel. It is set. It will be argued. They are expediting it. Uh, that is a much different schedule that we we would have had had Judge Vincent out of Florida not ordered that. But the interesting thing is a couple huge things that happened before that, because on May 10th, you know, the case out of Virginia with Ken Cuccinelli, the Attorney General, that will be argued in the Fourth Circuit. Uh, and he is still pushing to get that case fast-tracked to the Supreme Court. We now know that the justices on April 15th in their closed conference behind closed doors will consider that petition. We could know on April 15th or probably more likely the following Monday what their vote is. Uh, if that's the case, uh, that case out of Virginia could get to the Supreme Court before anything else does. Bottom line, one of those cases is going to end up there if the justices take them. Possibly as early as next term, that means it's going to be decided in the middle of 2012 presidential election. Mm. Uh, so a lot of movement on that front as well yesterday. What does that mean, Joe, as far I mean, does it... Does it who, who ultimately decides, by the way, who if they're going to hear this case or not? Is that John the Supreme Rushmore? Court? Yeah. Oh, you know, the, well, the, the justices had vote. Mm -hmm. uh, they they could vote to hear it. They have to have at least four justices to take an appeal, mm -hmm. uh, you know, to grant cert. But but they will. I I, I think it's. It's a it's an open question as to whether or not they would take it quickly because they benefit from having the opinions written by the other courts before it gets to them. But they may feel compelled, g given the insignificance of the issue, to grant an expedited appeal. You, you just don't know what they're going to do. do. Do you get the sense, though, Shannon, that uh, the, that the administration wants this to to drag on as long yes. as possible in the courts? Well, that's certainly been uh, you know what all the pundits think is that they don't want it to uh, be you know, overturned, obviously, anytime soon, because the longer it goes on, the more that states have to go ahead and start implementing the framework and right. spending the money to mm -hmm. get things set up for when those mandates kick in uh, in 2014 and the different things. You know, if they lay the groundwork and they spend the money, the states are going to continue down that track until it's ultimately decided, and the longer that takes, the more invested they'll be. All right, Shannon, good to talk to you. We always appreciate you, you coming on the show. Thanks very Happy much.